let's talk a little bit about twisting fringe. Why not just tie an overhand knot and let it hang? I've discovered over time that the fringe just doesn't look as nice after it's washed and it's worn. So I prefer to twist the fringe. I've also braided it at times as well, and you can do some other fancy knots. I'm gonna talk a little bit about a couple of ways that people twist the fringe and which one looks a little nicer. Um, hopefully you can see, I'm gonna zero in a little bit here. I hope you can see here, there's a little thread in between and there's a little thread in between here and here. But as you go over here, you can't see that thread as much. That's because the groups were grouped differently here than they were done here. This is the lazy way of doing it, which I tend to fall back on a lot. This is a little more, you have to remember what you're doing to get a little nicer uh, edge up near the, uh, the ed end of the fabric. I'm gonna show you what happens with each one of them or why one looks one way and one looks the other way. This is the one end, it's all finished. I did the other end, but I have another piece yet to do that goes along with what I'm making right now. I'm going to show you two ways. One is with this device. The other way is with my hands. So I'm going to move out a little bit here. We'll take this one out of the way. Now I have the next piece on the uh, table ready to start to show you how I fringe. But some of you might look and see this thread and you go, oh, it's going to start to unravel. It's okay. I'm going to be pushing it up. It'll be fine. I'm going to bring this over a little bit here so we can see the end where we're going to start. What I like to do, I've already twisted two of the ends, uh, two at the one end, and I'd like to start the other. So what I often do is I work my way maybe a few inches and a few inches here, and what I'd like to do is end up in the center. The reason I like to end up in the center is sometimes when you uh, you have so many ends and you're doing in groups of three and or six or whatever it is that you're doing, but you end up with an odd number in the middle. If I end up with some odd numbers, I like to put them in the middle I kind of spread them out so they're not quite as noticeable. And I'll explain that in a little bit, one way to take care of that, because I already know that this one's not gonna work out evenly. So let's take a look at the one way. The one way, the lazy way, is you take three and you take the next three. You just squish it up there. And like I said, I'm gonna do it just with my hands, make sure we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go clockwise twist, 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 twist. And I like to twist until it gets a little kinky. Then I'm gonna put it together, twist the other way. Now by doing it this way, it might not be as consistent as if I use the device with a little alligator clips. So I do a loose one, then I bring it all the way back down here. And I want to make sure that they are the same. And make sure it moves up a little bit. Now I can tighten it. I have it exactly where I want it. Now that again, that's the lazy person's way. Let me do the next one and you'll see what happens. The little gap that's gonna show up. And we don't want the gap. Again, I'm gonna swish that up and I'm going to take twist, twist, twist. And again, do a nice little loose knot here and then tighten it up to the end. Now I can already see there's a little thread in here. Now you might go, oh, that's not a big deal, but over time it kind of hangs out. I wanna prevent that from happening. I'm gonna start right now. Hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna move these three here. And now this time I'm going to take two but I'm not gonna take the next one. I'm gonna skip that thread or that piece of yarn and go on to the next one. If it's underneath, it's underneath. If it's over top, it stays where it is. I'm gonna take that again. And again, I'm gonna move that up, twist it together. Make sure the other thread doesn't get in my way. 
put it together, twist it the other way, like I said. And again, I like to slide it back and forth to get it nice and even. So I'm gonna come back down here, get these even. And I'll do one more. Well, actually I'll do it with the alligator clip. But what I'd like you to see is what's going, what is gonna to start to happen is as I move this up and go to do the next one, oops, forgot to get that one from underneath there, didn't we? Like I said, we just, we have the third one, one, two, three, we have this one and I need to skip it. I'm gonna skip over to that one so it's not the one that's right next to it and I will Smoosh it up. You can already see that that's already up there pretty tight. So it's not gonna uh, show a little gap down at the bottom that we saw on the other piece that I was twisting. Now I'm going to next demonstrate with the alligator clips. We have a little alligator clip here. I'm gonna be able to clip things on, but I'm gonna pause for a moment and I'm gonna clamp it to the table. You don't have to clamp it to the table. Sometimes I use it free, but I'm gonna clamp it to make it a little bit easier so you can see how secure it is and keeps things kind of nice and tidy. All right, here we are. Let's kind of start over again with this. One thread is already from this group, skipped over. I am going to, since I have four clips here, I'm going to make four groups. There's one. The next one, again, I have to take it, not the one right beside it, but I'm going to take the next one over, pop that up there, take the next two, but the one on the top, and I'm just moving it out of the way. And again, I have these, and I want to take the one from underneath. All right, so I have four of those ready. I'm going to take each group, and I'm going to clip it in the same spot, or at least close to the same spot. And what's nice about this is that I can count. So I've already figured out that I want to do 12. So I'm going to turn this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Really a lot of twist in it. Also, whoops, let's put that back on there. Sometimes you clamp something on and it's not going to stay where you want it. I'm going to take one at a time off. Take those two together. Do a very loose knot. Overhand knot, kind of loose right now. I could adjust a little bit. Take this one off and do the same thing. Do another loose knot. And now what I'll do is the same thing. I kind of smoosh it, kind of smooth it out. And I'm going to compare it to the one beside it. I can also bring this one over. Sometimes it's good to always measure with the first one. Or, again, I've also used rulers at times, mainly for the finer yarn. And as you can see, I'm tightening that up. Now, what's nice is I can already see by using this device, these are consistent. These are not as tight. So that's something else you might want to consider. I probably will take these out and redo those over. Then the next thing I'll also be doing is I'll be cutting these as I did before, very, very close to the end. I already like the way that it's starting to all, this loose thread, as you might think, or piece of yarn, is already finding its way up to the top there. So let me do that again. We have the first set of three, one. I'm gonna take the next set, and remember two, and then skip one, put that up, the next two, skip one, third one, and we'll do one more. So we have the four groups like that. And we're all ready now to clip them. Try 
going to, again, smooth them all out so they're all going to be about the same length. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That time I did hold that so it didn't uh, move on me as much. Again, carefully remove those. And if for some reason they, un <laughs> they come undone, which does happen sometimes, you're just gonna have to redo it again. Put them back in and do it again. The nice loose, loose one. Another one. Move it back and forth a little bit. Do the overhand knot. Now, if you're someone who's very mathematical, maybe you already calculate and, and realize that, gee, one, I'm only, I have six all in all of these, but I know that I'm gonna end up with not, I'm gonna end up with five when I'm done. Now, what am I gonna do? Well, if you end up with five or an odd number, that's close enough, then you would take th three and two and put those together. It's gonna, you're not gonna notice it after you're finished. And you can also work at, perhaps maybe if you know it's going to happen, you could do that one at the very beginning and at the other end, or maybe put it in the middle, maybe you have two. So you're gonna have to maybe figure things out. Again, if you don't want, if you want to kind of not sure you cannot cut all these. Then if you want to undo some of them and try to balance things out, you can. That's up to you. So well, like I said, I'm gonna do one end, I'm gonna do another, and I like to end up in the middle. The other thing that happens is that loose thread as you're twisting, it starts to go up into where it's supposed to be. Again, I'm gonna finish this up, do the other end, then the next step will be to wash. So 